Good day, mate. Welcome to Loki AP. All right, enough of that accent. All right, so this, uh, I'm going to just run through a demonstration of how to install Loki AP onto a Orange Pi or Raspberry Pi device. It is a process that essentially you need to download some free software and then connect to, or at least navigate to this website. Follow the instructions that I'm going to give you now, and then you will be able to connect to LokiNet through a Pi device. What we're going to need is prerequisites here. Let's just go down. If you fall down through this page here, I'm not going to talk about Loki. I'm, I suspect the fact that you are here, that you're fully aware of what Loki is. You may not be fully aware of what the AP is, but hopefully at the end of this video you will be. So, again, you need a Raspberry Pi or Orange Pi device. In this case, for the demonstration, I'm going to use an Orange Pi R1. When you look at the two devices, they do have different OSs. So, Res Raspberry Pi will be running at Raspbian for this case. You need to download an image, preferably a light image. Stretch is stable, Buster is relatively new, can be unstable. Uh, both are supported, but at any rate, uh, this is a link to getting a Raspberry Pi Raspbian image. And uh, additionally, over here for Orange Pi, this takes to the repositories uh, for Armbian. This will take you either to the nightly repository here or to a stretch image over here. Similarly for the R1, and if you navigate, if you start working back through, you can actually find other repositories for other devices that are supported. Not everything is being tested, but I have tested it on uh, the Orange Pi and as well as the Raspbian Pi, um, Raspberry Pi 3B+. All right, I've already downloaded the image, but I'll uh, just quickly click on this to show you what the web page looks like. Once you get over to Armbian, in this case, this page, uh, the nightly images, the latest one is at the bottom. Download that. It's a zip file. I'll just go back here. Download the zip file. Place it on your hard drive somewhere. Unzip, unarchive the file. Look for the one file in there. That's the .image file. That's the one you want. Okay, for uh, software here, whether you're on Windows or Linux, this is very similar. You, I suspect you know how to install software on your system. You can go down here and down, download a free version of Etcher. Etcher is for burning SD images to a SD card. And the other program you will require is PuTTY. And PuTTY is for communicating through SSH to the device once it's booted. So initially what we have to do is get the image onto the SD card and then get that SD card into the device then we'll connect to it. In this case what I've got is a 16 gigabyte micro SD card for the Orange Pi R1. You could probably get away with an 8 gigabyte device. I have a read writer, USB read writer um, interface to be able to put that card into and that's plugged into my personal computer right now that I'm using right here. So once that's all established, you have the software, you have the image, we're going to go in and we're going to open Etcher. I will find it here. This is Etcher. Initially when you open Etcher, the screen will be the same regardless, uh, very similar if it's Windows or Linux. What you want to do is first go to the settings and ensure it's set up the way you want. Now in this case it's going to auto unmount. I've turned off on anonymous reporting. I've also just to speed things up here, but I don't recommend turning this off. I've uh, removed validate write on success. That just goes and checks that the burn is good and uh, the data verifies. What you want to do is you want to ensure here that you are actually connected to your SD card and not something else. Simply, uh, if you, in this case, I'm just mousing over, it's telling me the device. And I'm also verifying that by looking at the size of the device. It should be the size of what you've installed, roughly. If it's some other size or con considerably larger, you may be on something other than your SD card. You do not want to write to that. So just ensure you've got the right device. Okay. From here, we will select the image that we've downloaded and unarchived. Uh, this is this case. I'm using this uh, Armbian image for the nightly build, and it is a .dot image file. From there, we will flash. We need to authenticate. Uh, I need to do that correctly. There we, go. there we go. So that's similar for Windows, except you don't need to put in a password. You just need to hit OK on the pop-up screen. 
and this will take uh, about a minute it's just writing out and then we'll have the burned initial image that we're going to take out of the computer what I will talk about next is something you need to do on your own time you need to go into your web browser you need to navigate to your own router you need to be able to find out the IP address of the device once it's uh, booted up need that information so that we can get to the next step to connect with putty so each router is different yours however you navigate to your own router you need to log into your router go to the devices on there and you want to look for something that uh, is reflective of the Pi device that you have so if it's an Orange Pi or Raspberry Pi it's usually named that Orange Pi or Raspberry Pi or something th that's identifiable as that device copy down that address because you will need that so I'm just going to pause this there it is finished I'm just going to pause this momentarily remove the SD card and then put it into the Pi device and I'll restart the recording and we are back so what I have just done is remove the SD card from my uh, laptop in this case installed it into the Orange Pi and it has booted uh, what I would be doing hadn't I done this before is now going to my router looking for that IP address in the devices finding it and having that ready to, for the next stage so what we're going to do now is we're going to open up putty this is the default screen that you'll get session uh, I have already stored the information here I'll just load this in and for um, to show you what needs to be go put into the screen so right now this is my address in your case you're going to have to change it to the address that you obtained off your router the port is default 22 SSH is a connection type most of that should be default the only thing you really need to change is IP address you can leave this alone down here as well once that's all set up we're going to connect to the device so opening the device it has not booted yet so that is common what we have to do is repeat that process so once it's established for the first time it will open there we go okay so first time you connect to the device you'll get this uh, warning potential security breach you need to accept that now this is Armbian so the login for Raspbian will be different but in this case default username is root default password is 1234 and it requires you on first uh, boot up to change the default password so we're going to enter the default password again in this case I'm going to create a new password for simplicity I'm just going to call it LokiNet1 and I have to repeat that to ensure I typed it correctly it also wants you to create a user we're not going to use it but we still need to do it so in this case I'm going to call it Loki and I'm going to give it the same LokiNet1 password and once that's all done it's going to ask you if you want to put any personal information for that user in I don't so I'm just going to enter enter for all those values and if that's all correct hit enter and that'll finish the process and we'll be back to the command prompt so from here what we can do is now go back to the website the github page and pull up this command here so this quick installer header here we want to copy everything to the right of the dollar sign so we get onward we're just going to copy that and we go back to putty and we're going to paste that in now what i will do just to save time is i will speed up the video through this process but i will talk you through the initial portion of this to explain what it's doing so it's going to download a bunch of packages it's also going to add in the uh, LokiNet binary repository so from that binary repository it's going to download the latest version of LokiNet and it will set it up and initialize it when this process is complete you will be asked to reboot the device and when you reboot the device you will be given a new Wi-Fi connection with an SSID of Loki-access okay through this process you're going to be given a series of prompts in most cases unless you have some particular reason to do so you want to answer yes to all these prompts so I'm going to speed up this part of the uh, video and run through to the end of this and then we'll discuss um, logging into the actual device once it's fully set up and rebooted and here we go
Okay, so now we find ourselves at the reboot screen. So after the reboot, we're going to be back up. What we're going to do is we're going to let it reboot and then connect via Wi-Fi to the AP. And then from there, we'll go ahead and look at um, LokiNet. And we'll connect to the GUI interface as well. So I will just reboot here and then we'll uh, carry on. Now what you'll see here as a final reminder is the SSID of Loki Access that you'll see on your Wi-Fi network, uh, available networks, as well as the password that you need to use, change me with C and M uppercase. Okay, that's gone. We'll carry on once we're connected. All right, so the device is rebooted into the AP. Um, I'm just going to go through just briefly here on the web page. There is a link here to a dot LokiNet address. So anything that's uh, a dot LokiNet address is going to be a random set of characters like this, followed by a suffix of dot Loki. If you were to try to click on this and weren't connected to LokiNet, then it'll just take you a DNS fail because it cannot resolve this, it cannot go through the Onion network, routing network. It essentially goes nowhere. But once connected to LokiNet, this will resolve and take you to a web page that's hosted on the LokiNet service so if I go over here right now actually let me just do that I'm connected to my own uh, Wi-Fi network here I'll just click on that and you'll see you'll get a failure let's just go back we're gonna connect now to the AP so again it will present itself here as Loki access I've logged in this before so I don't require I'm not required to put in the password but you will be prompted for the password here just enter it once you're connected to the device, this is just going to disconnect and reconnect momentarily. Um, I will show you how to get into the GUI interface first. So from here you have a, this IP address. You can just copy that, put that back into the browser. There we're connected. And we'll just paste that there. And we'll go there. So this will take you in. The first time you sign in, you'll have to, this is being stored in my system, but the first time you'll have to put in the username of admin and the password secret. You can sign in and that'll take you to the interface. Okay, this is the main page of the dashboard with some information about the network. Um, down the side here, you have various tabs. So let's go through this quickly. So this is the system tab. It will show you the resources that are being used. You can reboot the device here, shut it down refresh this page. You can see here LokiNet and the AP uses very little uh, CPU load. This is an H2 very fairly underpowered quad-core uh, mobility processor on the Orange Pi R1. As well the amount of memory available is only 512 megabytes and it's using about one-third of that. Um, the next thing that we can see is the data usage. Again if we connect to an adapter here we can see how much data is going in and out of the AP so this is similar to what you would have on your router. You'll store it here for hourly. You can graph it hourly, daily, monthly, whatever. Theme is just simply the theme that we have right now. We have the Loki AP theme up. Uh, you can change the login information both for the AP itself here and you can change the Wi-Fi client, the Loki access name and the password to log into the um, Wi-Fi as well from here from the Wi-Fi client page. I will go, the last one I'll show you here is the LokiNet page itself, so configuring note LokiNet, it is all pre-configured, you don't even need to go into the GUI, if, if, unless there is some reason that you need to custom configure this, this will all be set up in the installation, and you'll in fact have it running, but a couple of things here, it shows you the daemons running in the background, here we can see the current LokiNet version is, uh, that has been brought down, and this will update if there's updates, it checks daily for any uh, new binary releases of LokiNet and will update. At the current time this is 0.5.2-1 and it shows it's Debian 10 Buster. Under here there's some instructions which deal with these three buttons. You want to see these all red. Okay. Uh, if you wanted to stop the daemon for whatever reason just have internet you can do that. You will have internet regardless of the daemon running or not so I would just leave it running. Uh, the INI file is part of LokiNet. It basically generates it automatically. If there's some reason that you needed to regenerate that, say it got wiped out or whatever, you can regenerate that file here. Uh, also bootstrapping it, that's already been done with the default bootstrap and it, you're good to go. But if you needed to put a custom one in or rebootstrap it for whatever reason, you can push that, it'll use a default or you can put in your own custom bootstrap in here if somebody said, uh, you know, potentially on a forum, may try bootstrap, whatever. Enter the address here, rebootstrap.
it'll bootstrap LokiNet to that new bootstrap. Okay, well, we'll go back here. Um, let me take us back to the web page. Stand by, I'm just backing up three pages here because I'm lazy. All right, so again, we'll go to LokiNet now. So this is the Wikipedia page or Wiki page for LokiNet. And here you can see now, again, it's resolved a Loki. You can see down here some information that was briefly up here that it's resolving a Loki address. Again, up here, you can see the address is a dot Loki address is only available on LokiNet. Uh, this is the community page, or sorry, this is the main page of the wiki. But in here, there's a link to community services under which there's other um, LokiNet hosted uh, pages, one of which is uh, Jeff's page. Or Jeff's um, social network, Plaroma. If you go to that, you'll see on here there's a few people we're sending some data back and forth, information, posting some files and whatever just to test the system. Again, everything in, is in development right now, so you know your mileage may vary. Um, but as you can see here, people have been posting. I've posted quite a bit of uh, pictures and whatever, some music, files, some links, whatever. So this is all on LokiNet. Um, if we go back, Jason has put up some high resolution uh, images on his site. We'll just go to Jason's site, go under the photos, and uh, we'll download something here that he's posted. And we can see a uh, high res image come down from his site. So these are uh, high definition images. Once it's complete, I'll actually zoom in to show you. And. Um, it allows us to test the, the current state of LokiNet. What's down here? Okay. Alright, I'll just zoom in. So as you can see, that's a high resolution image. Alright, for the internet, yeah, basically you have access here. I'll just put something in here. You have access to the internet as well, whether or not the daemon is running. So it's running both internet and LokiNet simultaneously. Um, and that's about it. Hopefully this uh, video has helped you install or see what LokiNet is capable of. And uh, as I say, all of this is currently in development phase right now. It's constantly changing, so uh, just continue to look for updates and uh, we'll see improvements uh, in terms of performance and uh, accessibility in the near future, I'm sure. Okay, thanks.